Man, oh man, I'm happy to do the show tonight. Ooh, I don't know if that was a little loud. I was a little scream and excitement that uh, we're happy to do a show tonight after such a exciting, exciting weekend. I am Peter Brown. Thank you for watching FM TV Weekly. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump right in and talk a lot about Inter Miami versus New York, and then coming up Toronto game. Lots to talk about. Lots of fun. Let's have a good time tonight because they beat a the champs. They beat the champs. So. We're going we're gonna to celebrate tonight. We're going to have fun with you. But, of course, I don't do this by myself. Everybody welcome it. Everybody's favorite uncle, Uncle Ed. Vamos Inter Miami, que esta noche. Ya ganamos. We won. Peter Brown, we won, man. That's it. Oh, but, man, do they make us suffer, dude. Oh, I'm near, I think I'm going to have a heart attack because of these guys. Can, can I sue them for that? Uh, or at least my family could if I pass away. It's funny you say that because my brother joined me at the game and on the way out of the game, that's one of the topics we were talking about is, is, is uh, heart attacks and, and uh, stress. And under, oh. his, his, his conversations were less about Inter-Miami, more about life, but it, it all kind of plays together. We, you know, and that's why we titled the show uh, uh, Making Us Suffer for a Win because... Ooh, it was a tough game, man. They they we did always not come from behind, Peter. We always come from behind, and they did it's... not really look that good. Uh, I don't think. Well, if you look at the stats, uh, the other team dominated, but man, we we can score. We can we, we we can do that comeback, and I think that's important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they 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 definitely um, they they have the never never quit, never say die attitude uh so um lots lots to talk about so anyways everybody welcome to the show and uh everybody get into the chat say hi and uh we'll 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 uh you know bring your bring your 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 message up on the screen get it get interactive let's start talking and uh, you can help guide the show uh, but uh before tell we what you want to talk about exactly tell us what you want to talk about before yeah. we get into all that, oh, I should have grabbed this photo as well, but I didn't. But before we get into all that, let's say a big thank you to our friends at Canesware. And Canesware, the entire Canesware staff, uh, pretty much, was at the game uh, celebrating this victory, getting happy, getting excited. They were in the uh, corner, very close to the supporter section, having a good time. And you can hang out with these guys and have a good time as well with them in Davie, Florida, off University Drive, just south of 595. Get all your Inner Miami gear, the cheapest prices in town, great selection. They've they've recently got in this uh, shirt here, and uh, they've got a, a fresh supply of the, the pink jersey. So they got the flowery jersey that some people like. Uh, very, very uh, you know interesting print. And uh, I see I see lots of uh, people on uh, wearing them around. So go get them at Caneswear. All right. Well, Peter, man, it was great seeing those guys out there. You know, gave them, they were all excited because we won. And yeah, you forgot to get that the picture. They had like a video they put up. Also, I I retweeted that. Like I said on Twitter. And um, no, it was uh, it, dude. It was it was such an awesome game. You know, not. Not good for anybody with heart conditions because man, I, I I felt a couple of times like I was gonna pass pass out or something, but I survived. That's good. That's good. Let's hey, let's uh before we get too deep into it, let's say hi to everybody in the chat, Ed. Peter Brown, I want to say hi first to uh, B King. I saw Brian King out there. First person I saw. Uh, we were looking for uh, for where the tailgate was at, and I I did find them. Uh, you know, like, I guess we got there a little bit too early, but mm. um, it was great. Met his daughter also, who was the, the one that got him into our show. Nice. So, you know, so, uh, shout out to him. Uh, next, uh, Kata is also on here supporting, as usual. Uh, our good friend Jose Velasquez is also in here. Uh, straight from Atlanta, a new wise man. Asking about the manager's and, fight at the Chelsea match. I didn't see that, but uh, we did see you didn't some. see that? Ooh. No, but I did see at the, the Inter-Miami game some New York City uh, players fighting each other. 
Oh, I saw that too, and I, I you know what? I forgot to look it up to see what what was the deal with that. Yeah, you know they try to keep that all hush hush. Yeah, of course. Anyways, uh, one world, one goal. Also here, she's enjoying, I guess, me my singing. Mmm. And uh, we got Carl Toppin is also with us from Jamaica. I don't know if any, I don't know if anybody else, Peter Brown, because uh, my 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 thing froze over here for some all reason. All right, we got we got Tio Lewis. Richard Greenberg, our friend from Toronto, says, Big rumor, a certain Toronto FC fan will be sitting in your section and row for this weekend's TFC Inter-Miami FC nice. game. CF game. CF. Uh, does he get, do, do you know the exact row that we're in uh, there, uh, Richard? Do, do you, row, row, come find us, section 115, row 34. There you go. There's find us hey, and you can. It, and Richard, there's plenty of empty seats around us. So, yeah. so, so I, come, I think they try to keep people away from us, Peter. So come sit with I, us. But so there's plenty of empty seats around us. <laughs> there's all, there's also Judge Dredd is in here. He's getting ready for the playoffs. Oof. Oh, we're we're there right now. Hopefully we can keep this up. We need that we need that win against Toronto. Yeah. Sorry there, Richard, but you know, we need those points. Everybody's favorite photographer, Chris Arjun. Chris! You took and our then, picture. Thanks, bud. Doofster. Uh, next time, try to make us look a little bit better, though. Yeah, Doofster is in there as well. Oh, Photoshop. here, another one just came in. Uh, Steve Munoz is in. Steve, what's up? Well, Steve's got that cafecito thing going. I got it here, too. There we go. There, Steve. Yeah, I, uh, I'm drinking a little uh, Puerto Rican beer here. Oh, look at that. Peter's got a new favorite store that he uh, stops by. I just discovered it. It's just a, a place called Keys Food Fresh Food, something like that. And and uh, I know there there's there there are several locations. They're from New Jersey apparently, but they just came into my neighborhood. So checked it out today. And he has some cafecito and a Cuban sandwich. You, I, I remember you showed me. Right here, Ed. Right here. Look at this that. was lunch. This was lunch. This blew up my wow. diet big time. But uh, you, you just know, had to though. I had to get this sandwich here, Ed, and this coffee because you know why? It made me think of the video that we just put up earlier this week. And if you have not seen our food video, go watch it. And uh, you, they have a Cuban sandwich at the Inter Miami Stadium. Not it's pretty good. This good, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it is good. Right. And and then next uh, game, we do want to do a review of the. Cafe Bustello stuff. So that's so there's the coffee there that I will be comparing it to. Um, and and so we were going to do that this week, but then we we ended up getting kind of stuck at the uh, at the, um, at the tailgate. tailgate, hanging out with everybody, bringing my brother who was having a good time. Um, Had a couple the, of beers there with the, yeah. with the Southern Legion guys. Uh, oh, uh, what's that, Peter? Wait, wait, that was the wrong photo I wanted. I didn't want that. Oh, man, Peter Brown. Where's the photo I was looking for? No. Oh, man. Messing up uh, already. Ah, yeah. You know. You know how it is. This is the this is the team celebrating. Look at that. And, and Marsman is in his underwear. Thankfully, you you covered him. Yeah, I, I, I didn't want it to be uh, inappropriate. Inappropriate. But, yeah. This is this. So, okay. We're going to get ready to. I was, I was looking for the picture I put up. I had at, of um, the, that Chris took. Um. Oh. It's it's in there somewhere, I'm sure. Oh, I have it. I have it loaded in here. Um, I just can't find it. Let's 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 uh, let's uh, go through everything. Here we go. Right. Here we go. This is this is what. Oh, Chris, there we go. Chris is a uh, photography here. He found us, and as you can see, nobody around us. It's I think they do that do they do that on purpose. Uh, they want people away from us. Um, there's got to be a reason, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this at least at least this time, uh, Chris didn't catch any of us yawning or anything like that. So mm -hmm. um, this was, was you know fun shot. Um, and your brother, I don't know what he was saying. He looks pretty excited right there. He my brother like is very animated, and he's learning soccer. So I and I, if I remember, this may be a situation where he's kind of telling us his view of the game, which. You know, it, it's kind of funny just because, you know, he's got so much enthusiasm about it 
because he's just learning uh-huh. about uh, football and enjoying the hell out of it. I mean, he's really enjoying coming to the games with us. And, um, and, and so, you know, he gets, very, and every time we take him, we win, we do win every single time and he, and he gets very, very, uh, animated. So, um, Richard, Richard does said, said he is sitting in our section and also said that I saw your food review video. I'll eat before I get to the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's more places to eat. We just haven't covered them yet. No, and we, we got started, we the basic one. Right. That was the plan was to start with the most basic that they have. Except for, I mean, that is the, the majority of the food booths there are that. There are a few others. There's another one that has shawarma, which we got to try. Um, mm-hmm. And so we'll do another video for that. And then there's a lot of food trucks that we got to try as well. So this 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 series so far, if you haven't watched them, promoting it because it's not... I. I want to see the numbers go up on the video, but the people that actually have watched it, uh, are we getting so many good uh, reviews? People stopping us, telling us how much they enjoyed the, the idea of doing this, that uh, no, you know they hadn't thought about doing like food reviews at a stadium, and so people love the concept. So um, we want to do more of them. And look, the, the, there's not that many games left in the season, and we started this late. We talked about doing it a lot and started it late. And so it'll go into next year. We're gonna have fun. No, mm-hmm. no, no, uh, mm-hmm. no rush on getting them done or anything like that. Just having some fun, showing what they got to eat at the stadium, and maybe, maybe we can kind of pressure them into uh, doing something better. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, it, but yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, so Peter, all right, man. Let's let's start off with. Um, oh well, yeah, we. There we go. Three, two. Just make us suffer all the time, and and I gotta say, man, what's up with the bras, the the men, the men bras that they got going? I see that in every team now. What did they call those in Seinfeld? What was it? The, uh, uh, you know, uh, Kramer was trying to create a man bra. It was the the brosier? I think it was the brosier. Was that what it was? The brosier? I think it was. I think or something it was. like that, or or the bro, or <laughs> something like that. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, every player wears these uh, silly bras. It's it's it says right there, stat something or other. This is where they get all their, their like, uh, you know, biometrics and all that kind of stuff that they get. You know, good helps with the, uh, you know, the, make sure they got enough electrolytes in them. I mean, this is all the science of, of football right there. Uh, do you, you think they got chest. somebody monitoring all this, Peter? Yes. I mean, that's that's looking at the stats all the time. Yeah. And, so you know, they're, they're, uh-huh. so there's a. They I, it, this stinks that they only did one season of this. But on ESPN Plus, there is um, when LAFC their first year, they did a you know like a, a behind the scenes series on about LAFC. I don't know if you saw it on ESPN Plus. It's really good. Hmm. And in that, they do talk about these things, and they show the players all after practice checking in with the medical staff, and they literally pull up on the screen. They turn it around. They show them the graphs of where they are talking about, you know, if they're getting enough electrolytes, if they're getting enough this, enough water, enough, you know, all these little minor, all these minor, all these things that are important to a footballer. And right. and then they tell them, you know, you need to do this. You need to do that. So, yeah, I mean, and, and uh, you know, all the teams are doing this kind of stuff. I mean, this is the science of football. It was and it's it's a, I don't remember what episode it was on that series, but it was pretty cool. And you and you learn why. They look so cool in their bros ears. Yeah. Well, you know, it'd be cool if they, they would start putting those stats on, you know. You know how people in here in the States were all about the stats and all that. Put that stuff up there. You know, you see how Pozuelo's doing or Iguain, you know, they're all he's like, you know, he needs more um, liquids or something or he's he's getting tired. I, you know, I don't know how it works. You know how they have like on those video games, the, their level of power going down. Hey, look, you got a good, yeah, that's, you know, so they got the app, right? So why not, why not feed us this kind of live information on your players? And like, we're sitting there, we could be armchair quarterbacks, right? And armchair coaches right. going, look, uh, you know, Iguain's, uh, you know, electrolytes His stats are, are going down. His, his we need to get him out. Yeah, right. He's, he's dehydrated. Get him out. Oh. Get him out, man, or or throw some water at that guy, or something, or Gatorade. Every, everybody, everybody starts throwing water bottles. <laughs> no, we yeah, don't want give, that. give him, yeah, reanimate the guy, you know, buzz him or something, you know, his heart's going uh, beating too quick or something. I don't know. We're, we're going a little too far with this. Yeah, yeah, but uh, 
People loving the Cuban sandwich. Cotta says he's going to get the Cuban next time he's at the stadium. Yeah, uh, the Cuban's good. It's not as good as that picture I just showed, but Cuban is is good. Especially uh, with a couple of beers, you won't even feel it. Right, right, right. They'll fill you up nice. Yeah, here's here's one world, one goal is right. None of these guys are Brandy Chastain. They're all get, doing their Brandy Chastain impression, ripping off their shirt, showing their uh, uh, you know sports bra. Well, you know, what's his name? Landon Donovan and, and Rooney did it also, remember? Yeah, Rooney did yeah. it first, and then Landon Donovan had to go copy him. Jim Rooney, that that's one. right. He did it to kind of mock or celebrate one or the other. I don't know how you look at it. Brady Chastain. Mm-hmm. But now all the players do it. And and, and, and uh, Pozuelo got a little yellow card for this. But but let's talk about P- Pozuelo and, and the impact he's had on this team. And because, you know, we were talking about it during the game, and you know, Iguain definitely looks better uh, recently. We're all now talking about, we talked about last week, is there a possibility, a way to re-sign him for next year without being a DP? You know, now we're all kind of interested in that, whereas just a, a month ago we were saying, you know, just sit him on the bench Get out. and never use him right. again, right? But because right. I think the impact of Pozuelo, you know, Iguain doesn't have to come back as far. You know, he's, he's, uh, Pozuelo's linking up really well with uh my my boy Bryce Duke love that kid even though Bryce had a bad game overall he, he still had an assist though did get that assist to Pozuelo which was a nice and I watched that play like four times today it was just this little tap he held the ball long enough tapped it and for I'm just the lightest that taps right into a on yeah. running Pozuelo amazing shot I got to say uh Peter's got this bromance thing going with uh, with Duke lately cuz he's like Always talking about Duke. Duke, there's my man, he started saying. So, you know. Where's Duke in um, this picture? Where's Duke at? There he is. There he is. Right oh, there, there he is. The right there in the middle. All right. right there in the middle. Let's hey. talk about middle, Okay, Peter. Yeah. Something you mentioned off of camera uh-huh. that has brought a little concern to me. Right. Iguain is always, what'd you say? You were the one that said it. You should say it. Iguain, and every time they they win, you know, it seems like not, they, they have one of these kind of group shots where they're celebrating. It's great to see. They're celebrating. They're all having a good time. And you see the guys in the middle, you know, yelling and stuff like that. And you always, always see Iguain on the fringe. It's kind of like everybody's yelling at him, come on, Gonzalo, come on, come on. And he's like, oh, all right, you know, I'll, all right. Meanwhile, you got the young guys in the middle like, yeah, you know, and, and, oh, yeah. and uh, you know, He's just always on the end. And to me, that's just, it, it looks odd. It's, he's, it seems like even though he's doing better, he's still the outsider. Yeah, I, I got to say, man, um, Pozuelo um, has, has, has really changed the team. He's definitely, you know, we, we were, I think everybody was barking up and down that we needed a number 10. And, and you know, and we finally got him. I, this is our guy. He's, he's. He's working on trying to get that, you know, that contract uh, for next year. The way he's going, I think we're going to give the, you know, Inter Miami will probably give him that contract. He, you know, he'll probably be our DP. Uh, I'm okay and, with that. And look uh, at that smile. See, now that's a man that's happy. Look at Pozuelo's smile. He's that's a man that's happy. He's showing those pearly whites. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, he's, uh, Iguain is playing better. Uh, and, and that's what we need, especially now that Campana is a little bit, uh, you know, he's, he's still um, hurt. Uh, I, I did hear the press conference. Uh, yeah. Coach Neville was saying that looks like um, like Campana will be back sooner. I hope they, you know, this time take their time and make sure he's OK before they, you know, give him a couple minutes. You know, at first, don't don't bring him on too quick, um, you know, help help him get his rhythm back. And I'm hoping that if this team keeps playing the way it is, that we'll, we'll finally play with the two forwards that I've always dreamt of, you know, that, that we saw briefly for one one game before, uh, you know, the uh, he hurt himself, Campana hurt himself again. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I would love to see that. I know Campana is, uh, you know, he'll do something that Iguain doesn't. He'll go back and defend. Iguain can stay up. But I think Campana is, uh, he'll, he'll, He'll um, go back and defend, and then maybe Pozuelo could hook up with Higuain, and I don't know. I'm just thinking of a more offensive uh, Inter Miami. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, I was I was super excited when I heard Neville say that you know he's closer than four to six weeks coming back, Campana. So 
yeah, hopefully that's, but I am scared about them rushing it. It sounds like the way he said it is like Campana's like working overtime. It feels like he knows the clock is ticking and he's got to be on that field and inform so he can get to the World Cup. I mean, does he still have a chance for the World Cup? You pay attention he, to the Ecuador. Yeah, yeah, he does. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Ecuador coach came, uh, I believe uh, it was for that game that he got hurt um, or the game before. Uh, so if they're he's coming down and, and checking him out, it means that he still has a good chance on, of going. Um, he's in a hurry to get uh, back in shape. Mm -hmm. He's in a hurry to score some goals. He needs to score some more goals and uh, and, and try to get in that World Cup uh, team. Um, in, in a way, I'm, you know, I, I'd i like for him to come back next year as, as our DP. I don't know if he's still eligible for the uh, 20, what is it, the youth, uh, yeah, so, how's it called? Yeah, the under uh, under 22 youth initiative or something like that. Um, right. The question I had, and I brought this up on a previous show, so I did a little research on that initiative, and it applies to any player under 22 when they sign their first contract. And so my question is, does a loan count as a contract, your first contract? So I don't know. Is that a, cause, mm. cause it's a loan. It's not like a normal, Hey, we own you contract. It's, right. it's a loan. So if a loan does count as his first contract, then no, he would not qualify for that initiative. But if it, but if it doesn't count as, as you know, if, if, if we sign him and that is his first contract with the team, cause then they own him then yeah, he would, I think, from what I right. understand. Well, um, I'm sure his price would go up if he goes to the World Cup, especially if he does well. And so that's um, where the, the evil side of me came out um, this weekend. And, and that's, I'm talking at the tailgate with some of the guys, and I'm like, you know, I kind of, you know, I, you know, I, if he doesn't make the World Cup, I'm good with that. I mean, I prefer for him not to make the World Cup because if he does make the World Cup, that price tag goes up. And and he will hope, you know, good chance he has good good outings and then uh, attracts more teams and more suitors as well potentially, right? So, right. um the the selfish side of me the wants Peter. the the uh, you know coach to to just ignore him. Go, yeah, he's he was just recently hurt. He's too fragile. Nah, don't want him. We need somebody in good shape. All but, right. But speaking of international coaches, um, the U.S. national team coach uh, was apparently we heard was at Lockhart Stadium this weekend. Well, Dry Pink Stadium. Yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently he was there. He went to go see um, yeah. uh, Yedlin. Um, people were, I saw on, uh, on social media, people were talking about he's got to look at Duke as well because he's he, a future player for the national right. team, hopefully. Yeah, he may not make this World Cup, but definitely look at him for the future. Yeah. So, um, uh, unfortunately, we're on the side that we're on, we never get to see any celebrities. We need to bring, you know? uh, we need to bring, uh, um, um, Binoc binoculars. binoculars binoculars yeah yeah some of those um I, I was able to see that uh julio i guess is he's got a brand new phone or something yeah he yeah he's got a better phone actually, than we do actually tell if you know like like we we're always we're, we're basically in front of uh where beckham and and uh, the moss brothers sit so yeah, we always the opposite we always focus you know to see who's there and i didn't see david beckham i know he was in town yeah, I don't know. I don't, I I, I'm, I heard he was at some concert. I heard he was at some concert recently, uh, but that was, was not on the, the same game night. My oh, my wife. Was, yeah, no. It's funny is my wife follows Beckham more than than I do. I mean, she's sitting here saying to me because she follows him on like Instagram or something. She's like, "Do you know where Beckham was? Do you know where Beckham was?" And I'm like, "No, I don't." <laughs> she's always telling me where Beckham was, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I have I have no idea, but. Yeah, yeah. I think a uh, Bad Bunny or something like that. I don't know if he went to Bad Bunny or. I don't know. I can go know. ask my wife what concert he was at. I don't know where. Yeah, I think. Well, because I know that was the 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 night before they had that concert. So. Yeah. Um, maybe he went to that, but. Um, gosh, Peter. So 
One World, One Goal brings up a nice point. Marsman auditioning for Beckham's Skivvies ad. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, there you go. Oh, full oh shot. you just had to go there. Get the full shot. That That's that's like a Dutch thing, Peter. I I, I hear you do that as well. You always uh, get in your uh, whitey tighties or something. Yeah, but it doesn't look quite that good. You know, I don't have that uh, physique. <laughs> <laughs> The 53-year-old uh, me doesn't have that. Uh, look, the 22-year-old 20, me never had that physique either. <laughs> gotcha. You know, but uh, it, 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 it didn't um, Beckham model Calvin Klein? He sure did. That's Calvin uh, Klein that Marsman's wearing. Yep, he, he definitely was doing that. Um, I think, I don't know if you remember, he actually ran in his underwear in a, not too long, a few years back. mm and he was running from, uh, I think, it was in L.A. when he was with the with the Galaxy. Okay. He did a commercial of him, you know, running around in his underwear. And I'm sure he got paid pretty well for that. I'm sure. And the ladies must have, were enjoying it. Yeah, I'm sure that he much. did. I'm sure he did. <laughs> well, hey, you know, at this game, it was a lot. Hey, look, the game was a lot of fun. It was, it was like we talked about a nail biter. You know, there was one of the things that was bothering me was there were so many bad passes this entire game. They were giving the ball away so much. Duke was Duke was giving away the ball a lot himself. I just think he saved himself by you know that getting that assist. But uh -huh. it was just a fairly poor game by by them. And and that guy um, Talis Magno on on New York, yeah. dude is good. good. He and, is good. Every yeah. time he had the ball, he'd Dangerous. do a Taylor and get all the way up there. Yeah, yeah. But and, Taylor and, was and, off too. What's that? Since I mentioned him, Taylor was off too. Now but he did have that. He, he did early in the game have that great shot that uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know could have been a goal, and then yeah. we wouldn't be saying that. But uh, and then you know the the last goal. Uh, so Pozuelo gets two goals. And the last goal to me was just so sweet because how many times and I, you know it's happened a number of times to us where we uh -huh. do a bad pass and then get and then get you know penalized for for the bad pass. Somebody you know scores a goal on us. That has happened to us. I don't know how many times, but I remember it, right. you know, several times it's happened. And even in this game, while none of the bad passes so much were, you know, goals, some sloppy play on defense led to to one of those goals. Really sloppy defense. So it was it was just like it seemed poetic that uh, they do a pat a bad back pass to the goalkeeper, but Pozuelos, uh, you know, pounces on it, and I thought that was just so sweet. But yeah. But, we you finally know, got one. Yeah, what, we finally got one of those lucky breaks, man. Yeah, that exactly. doesn't happen to us very because, often. Because so. the lucky breaks are going the opposite way at the end of the first half. Because remember, there was supposed to be a few minutes of a stoppage time, right? Three minutes, something like that, a stoppage time. No, I, th I think it was like only one minute. Uh, and the guy, he went over. He went over by time. a lot. Right. Whatever the number we were supposed to have, he went over by a lot. And it's funny is I, I listened to the press conference afterwards and somebody said, to, to Neville, you know, the people were booing. And the, the question made it sound like people were booing the team for their performance. Damn. That no. is not what happened. People no. were booing the referee. They sure were. People That's were like, you, everybody was yelling, you know, blow the whistle. Blow the whistle. You could hear it everywhere. So the right. boos were not come, going out to the players. They were going out to that ref that did not know how to keep time. He sure didn't, man. And I, I remember that, and I saw that press conference, and I, I heard the same thing, and I was like, no, 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 no. Right. That, that, that's not what happened. We, you know, we, weren't, we never booed the team. We were booing that dumb referee. And we joined in in the boos as well. We sure did, <laughs> by golly. Fine. And, but I, I got to say, Peter, you've been, like, more enthused about Iguain than ever. I mean, you got that jersey and everything now with his name in the back in – you know that's that's quite an investment there. That's that's a Peter Brown that uh, I never knew before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what does your wife have to say about that? Now, there you go. Yeah, let's move you over here, Ed. What what does the wife have to say about you know? You're my wife that is not. My, I don't think my wife has seen my recent purchase, um, mm -hmm. yeah, of the Iguain jersey. Um, but, oh man, uh, I'd love to see her comment on on you know on your new jersey. You haven't shown mm -hmm. her uh, your new jersey. Uh, no, no, I have not. I have oh, not shown wow. her my New Jersey. Oh man, that that that's enough for me to tell you. Go bring her over here so she could see your New Jersey, because <laughs> I want to see what she says. <laughs> my my wife, for those that don't know, is the president 
of the of the Iguain fan club. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, or, the, or, or the, the Iguain hate or, club. Or the complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> of the Iguain hate club. Of the pack your bags and get the hell out of South Florida fan club. <laughs> well, she's the only one that hasn't changed her opinion on Iguain. I think everybody else has. Uh, well, we're all like, you know, sign him back for another year. But now I was going to say... Uh, that could be. I don't know if she's gone to the recent games where he's played well. I think she might have seen him play well in one game. Because um, the last couple games, she didn't go. Right. You know, I brought my brother. I brought somebody else. But uh, so I'm not I'm not sure if she saw him, you know, do so, you know, great. I mean, you know, so, you know, she saw him in the Barcelona game. And that was nothing to write home about. But right. that was, you know, Barcelona. Come on. <laughs> Uh, here, it's, uh, I agree with Kata here. Uh, Gibbs keeps underperforming. I hear, you know, people yelling to put Gibbs into the game. I don't get it. I mean, like, you know, sometimes he's, he's you know, he makes some good passes and, 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 you know, I think he had a shot. Uh, he, de- he had a shot on, on goal, but overall, I'm not overly impressed either. So, um, I agree with Kata there. What do you think, Ed? Yeah, he is underwhelming, I would call him. Um, Jobin Jones was also in there. And remember, I made a little comment like, oh, well, I thought he was gone. Maybe when Jobin has come in, I think he's looked good. Uh, they're just, you know, a couple players that, you know, don't haven't participated as much. So, you know, they, they were kind of off my radar. But um, one, of, one of the things that the coach was saying is that we, we have depth now, except for, um, you know, Robinson, of course, who's, who's probably not coming back. And... Um, and Campana that are hurt. I don't think there's anybody else, is there? Uh, I, I know um, uh, there was another player we mentioned earlier that was also coming back. Um, who was that? Um, uh, your mullet guy. Yes. Uh, See, you're, we're forgetting. God, we're getting old. No, 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 no. For- I'm, I'm, I was be, I'm not forgetting nothing, Ed. I'm bringing up the picture so we could see oh, him. Oh, there you go. So we could see him He's up right there. Th- Breck Shea back there. He's right there in the back. Look at him. So, um, so Breck Shea is, again. yeah, he's, he's, he's ready to play. Um, but the coach had mentioned that he'd only practiced for a couple days. So I didn't expect to see him, but, um, uh, he's ready to play. So yeah, that's depth right now. I, I think this is probably Breck's last year with a team. I would think, cause he spent so much time injured unless they get him cheap and just think, you know, depth. But right now, you know, yeah, because if, if if he's cheap enough, there's you're not there's no loss, right? But uh, other right. than a roster spot, but he's last we saw, he was still a a good player, not great right. anymore, but still a good player, and and gives it his all when he's out there. He is a total uh, team and, player, and he covers everything on the left hand side. So that's a player that that we would probably need for depth purposes. Yeah, absolutely. And he and, and and coach was saying something about having depth and I was thinking to myself, do we? Do we really have depth because it seems like we don't because we have so many injuries. But I think it's just cuz we had so many Coco, injuries. Coco another one. Right. Yeah, Coco exactly. brought him in and he hasn't he played what a few minutes? Yeah. You know, he came what, 20 minutes or something like that in a game, I don't know. Uh Richard Greenberg saying whatever happened to Breck. And he got injured. And so I don't remember what the injury was, but uh, he was injured out for most of the season, but he's ready to come back. And so you imagine he'll see some time. I don't know if you you know you bring him in in the second half or something like that, and um, you know somebody gets hurt, he plays. So, All right, Ed. What do you think? Uh, we do some uh, voicemails before we move Let's on to do uh, it. talk a little bit about Toronto. Let's do it. All right, it's time for your voicemail. Hello. Uh... How the hell are you today? This is America's favorite uncle, Uncle Dad. And you know what Uncle Ned always says, boys and girls? Fam, fam, fam. Tam, fam, fam. Yo, <laughs> speaking of Tam, if we get, uh, if, if I, I can't stand Iguain, but if we can bring him back under a Tam bill, we need to do it ASAP, okay? I'm not the biggest fan of him, but if we can maybe get him to the cusp of uh, DP Tam level, maybe saying. slightly over him with all of that gam that we have, all of that general allocation money, we can pay him down to bring it down to Tam. I think we can uh, make both sides happy. I think that 
I think we could probably go to like 1.5 million, give them 500,000 in uh, general allocation money, bring them back under, and, and uh, reclassify him as a TAM player. I would bring him back, actually. And I can't even stand the guy, but I'd bring him back. But uh, shout out to everybody out there. I wanted to say what's up to my two favorite guys, Uncle, uh, Uncle Ed and my man uh, downtown Peter Brown. Woo! Last night was a uh, was an awesome game, man. I told you guys, the guys got that dog in them. We can't even call them the uh, the Herons anymore. I'm thinking about calling them the uh, the Inter Miami Pit Bulls, man. Paint them pink. Put wings on that damn pit bull because they got that dog up in them. Um, for them to come back, man, this is something that. Uh, it's almost like a new phenomenon, man. We haven't seen that that much, uh, if if ever. Like I don't I don't really remember us doing this last year, and it damn sure wasn't. We weren't doing it two years ago, man. So um, I'm I'm proud of these guys. Uh, Alejandro Pesuelo, Chris Henderson. If one in a million chance that you're listening to the show, sign this man immediately. Just give him the damn checkbook and have him sign it, okay? Uh, because we have to bring back Alejandro Pesuelo, man. That, that guy, what we've seen so far is his offensive prowess and his ability to, uh, to create chances for his, his teammates, and he's got good chemistry, obviously, as you can see with, uh, with Iguain. Finally, he's the guy that can shut Iguain up. So uh, we haven't been able to shut uh, Gonzalo up, but uh, as well has. Um, now we've seen his uh, goal scoring prowess, and uh, – this is just a few of the tools in his uh, in his back, man. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've been more than impressed. Um, once again, uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys alone, man. Uh, but what do you think are our chances for making the playoffs for my two guys downtown, Peter Brown and Uncle Ed? That's- All right. Well, I, I think he was going to say goodbye, but he got cut off as as usual. <laughs> well, guess well, guess what. I'm back. <laughs> Uncle Ned just wanted to uh, leave you guys with this one last shout out. I wanted to shout out not only the two the two hosts, <laughs> I want to also shout out uh, all the people that uh, are part of my familia, the uh, Football Miami family, um, Italia, Jet Pancake, Jazz Fusion, uh, my homeboy Brody. Hey, Brody, tell these guys at uh, Southern Legion at the tailgate, man, see if they can uh, fry up some, some turkey sausages because your man is coming down there in three weeks. When uh, the Inter Miami Pit Bulls, the Pit Bullsitos, take on the uh, Mickey Mouse Club from uh, Orlando, um, yeah, the turkey sauce is uh, ch- chili pan. I'm, 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 I'm for it. I'm for it because uh, Uncle Ned don't dine on swine, if you know what I mean. Uh, and uh, my man, Yankee Boy, shout out to all you guys. Love you guys. Can't wait to see you guys soon. And to, uh, again, for Uncle Ed in downtown Peter Brown. We have to do that football Miami TV reunion. Well, not even reunion, but family get together. Hope we can do that the uh, last game of the season at uh, Dry Pink Stadium. All right, guys. Love you guys. Have a great night. Look forward to hearing what you guys are doing. Is he at the racetrack? Oh, I guess so. <laughs> mm, Man, the studio where? audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's at the racetrack or something there, you know? Yeah, Slow down was... there, uh, Uncle Ned. That was some loudness right there. You know, uh, I just realized, as he said, he's going to be down here um, against that Orlando game. I might not be here. Don't. I might miss a game. I Hopefully, I don't, but I might. Uh, I am going to Columbia, apparently, on Labor Day. And uh, I, I need oh. I, apparently I need to be there on Labor Day, which generally means I'm flying the day before. So I hopefully that changes. It's not I we haven't bought my tickets yet, but but um, I'm, I'm 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 overseeing a project that is launching um, on Labor Day. So um, you know, ah fiddlesticks. Yeah, I might miss it. Might miss it. And that would be I think man I don't think I've missed. I'm trying to think. I don't know if I've missed. None. An Inter Miami game, period. You you haven't. I don't I've think missed I've missed a couple. I don't think I've missed any games. You haven't because you That's know even my family vacations. Uh, you know I've been, I've I've kind of uh, I was gonna say I, I I scheduled around it, but not quite. I kind of got lucky <laughs> because I picked dates to go on vacation, and it just so happened. 
to be away games or something like that, you know. So I've got lucky uh, quite a few times, but uh, I might miss him. So that'll be that'll be a shame. But but uh, yeah, he's talking about uh, Pozuelo and signing that new contract. It does sound like um, he wants to be, to you know. I was listening to some uh, you know reports and stuff like that. It sounds like he definitely wants to be back. Uh, this everybody he knows this is a tryout, and I imagine they are working on that contract right now. Yeah, because he's doing great. Um, he's uh, he's also helped Iguain. People are talking about bringing back Iguain for next year, man. Of course, not as a DP. Who would have thought? Like, that's yeah. It, it, if you would have told me that, you know, five games ago, uh, or maybe a little bit farther back, uh, I would have said that never would have happened. But you know, there's Akata saying, "Yeah, bring him back as a Tams." He that's that's huge. I mean, people have you know, there's I've saw somebody with a. You know, I'm sorry, Iguain shirt uh, out there and on, on really? social media. Somebody. Yeah, it was it was hilarious. <laughs> I need that uh, shirt. That's the shirt I need. Yes, you do. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Iguain. And uh, what was it? Uh, no, so you know, a lot of people have you know they're they're retracting their their hate for Iguain because he's he's shown that he still has it. If he comes back next year, I think we should design some. Some like uh, FMTV apologizes, Iguain, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, we will definitely. For, we need for to come out with an smack. FMTV. We're sorry, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, and, yeah. and and the quote Peter Brown underneath, <laughs> quoting Peter Brown. Because you got to remember, I, w- I wasn't in that team. I, I didn't complain about him. You but I wasn't. Full you, on you weren't. Hate. You weren't as vehement as I was, but uh, but you, you complained for sure. There you go. All right. I'll still wear it. I'll still wear it. But I still wanted to it's say Peter Brown underneath. It's time for your voicemail. Hello? Last voicemail. And if you want to leave a voicemail, there's still time. 786-474-4435. Hey, Peter and Uncle Ed and all the great fans. It's the Italia One Love One Gold. This is normally the part where I would go, woo and I would ramble on about something, right? About Diego. But I did see a wonderful video posted by the team that said Victoria and Casa and so I'm being serious for a minute. I want to give a shout out to Mr. Moss and his wife and the team because they had done some great community service, which as you know, we've been pushing for like 10 years to get the team involved with, uh, especially with Miami. And they had done a tribute for the kids from Little Haiti FC who are now, you know, young gentlemen that are seniors going out into the world that they had won um, through the soccer club. They had won a big tournament or state championship i forget what it was exactly and we had done charity stuff with them years ago yes with diego started 17 gotta bring him in but seriously i was so thrilled they had him on the field they gift wrapped them all beautiful in the team colors and they honored each one of them had them line up and you know there's a lot of things that happens behind the scenes that you know i hope that um we can show a little more and then at the end of the clip phil is has them all in a group and he's yelling vamos in Spanish, which is awesome. And it said Victoria. I was going to make a joke that is just about the Spice Girls because we need to see more of Victoria Beckham, who does not love posh spice. Of course, I was sporty spice back in the day, and but I was secretly posh. So everyone, who's your favorite Spice Girl? Ooh. Discuss. Okay, yeah. love you guys. Love the show. That, now, okay, now that's a good question, Ed. Who's your favorite Spice Girl? Oh. I I gotta admit, back in the day, uh, I thought uh, Posh was uh, was the one. But yeah. Posh, man, she 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 looks snooty. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know, but I I I, I thought she was all that back in the day. When I heard mm. that Beckham got her, I was like, oh darn, tooting that Beckham. But um, yeah, but I th- I thought she was the the hottest one. To tell you the truth, I mean, what about you? Every everybody had everybody was was uh you know watching the spice spice world you know spice spice world movie. I mean you know. I don't know. I think maybe, maybe uh, you know, Baby Spice. Maybe you know, cute. Oh, you know, look at that. Yeah. Peter Brown likes them blondes. Yeah, maybe. I hear maybe. you. One what? world, one goal. Appreciating the shirt. So just to, I had fun with it. But this is a Miami. Where is it? FC shirt. The Miami original FC. Miami FC. And yeah. Diego played for a minute with. With Miami FC, not very long, but he did play a little bit. I remember scored a few goals. I, yeah, yeah, I remember him getting red card in, in at the at FIU and walking off the field, you know. But it was fun to see him on the field again, and so yeah, I I purchased 
a Diego Serena shirt. Nice. And uh, nothing to do with one world, one goal, and her love for for Diego for her personal reasons. But uh, um, you know, I, I I dug him and I was happy to see him back. And so yeah, that's a uh, old school, Ed. We go way back, right? I mean, this is this oh yeah, is, we do. This is we old do. stuff right here. This is you know, still in good shape too. It's a little big for me nowadays, though. I got to tell you, a little big. Oh, you you were kind of pudgy back in the day. <sighs> I was. And Kata is asking, was this before Ricardo Silva? Yes. This was the Traffic Sports Miami FC. And you could tell the difference mainly from, you know, uh, where is it? It's hard to do on the screen. Uh, the logo. So this is not, <clears throat> this is a very different logo from the current Miami FC. Um, the, th this is the Traffic Sports Miami FC that turned into the Fort Lauderdale Strikers again. So they, they, they did one year where they played half of the season in, at FIU and half of the season in Fort Lauderdale to see which city would embrace them more. Fort Lauderdale won the embrace, and so they rebranded the very next year as the Fort Lauderdale Strikers. Um, so, and we and, kept supporting them. Yes. Except now I have to drive all the way over here. Yes. And, over there, uh, I'm sorry. Um, and the interesting thing is that when Ricardo Silva wanted to create his team, yeah, he he asked if he could use the Miami FC moniker, and uh, you know he bought the URL from Traffic Sports. So, gotcha. Richard Greenberg coming at uh, coming at Victorious could not sing. Um, yeah, but I don't think it was about her singing. <laughs> exactly good point good point <laughs> I, I, that's you know she just looked good and that's i think what most of us uh fellas uh thought exactly exactly <laughs> i don't think anybody cared about their vocals <laughs> all right on to that's the now. on to the next game last 15 minutes of the show or whatever 13 minutes of the show let's talk about the next game Toronto is coming to town, and a, and they're bringing along with them a Mr. Greenberg, who's going to sit in our section. And Mr. Greenberg is saying three games in uh, three games in seven days is a lot of soccer, especially in the Miami Heat and the humidity. So I do, yeah. So they had a, a game on Saturday where they won and they looked really good. Um, yeah, I, I I watched the highlights, and 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 uh, you know, it, 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 it and and then you know it, they looked really good. Um, but then and then they're playing on Wednesday. They played New England, and then they come down to us. So at least they have a more favorable road trip than we had. Uh, you know, recently, where we had right. you know seventy something thousand miles, whatever the number was, and uh, um, this at least they're they're. They're just staying on the East Coast. Nice swing, no big deal. So, but it is a lot of games, and that is that is tough. So, but but Toronto, Toronto is is um, you know they're they're uh, you know they're on fire right now. They they're are really on good. fire. They're um, I was just yeah. looking for the standings. But, they're yeah, the um, standing. I think they're still below us, but and they need the points more than we do. So they're going to probably play harder, but they're going to be more tired. Is which at least I'm hoping that that much. Yeah. So Toronto's here in on uh, with 29 points, but 29 points they're still in it in 13th place, a 12th right. place. I mean, uh, they're still in it. I mean, you know, and and they are turning it around. They've the last four games uh, they have not lost their last four games, and out of their last four games they've won three of them. So they're right. on fire right now. And the question is to me is kind of how do we stop this Italian trio? Now, I, I, I mentioned here in Segne and, and uh, Bernadeschi mainly because, well, that's the picture I got. That's but, the picture. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, get... but there's three of them. And they, like you said, this we're basically playing the, the, the Italian national team, right? Is that what you said last time? Yeah, pretty much. Um, and, 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 and Richard Greenberg in here was asking, I don't, I don't see the chat, um, but he was asking uh, one world, one goal. Oh, here it is. He was asking one world, one goal. Who are you going to cheer for on Saturday, Miami or Toronto Italia FC? So 
you know? It's going to be hard for her to, to decide on that one, I think. Exactly. So, um, you know, they've got... And, 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 and so in the highlights... Now, I didn't watch the whole game. Richard can correct us if we're wrong. But in the highlights, it looked like Insigne was all over the field and is going to be a handful uh, on, on next, next Saturday. He looked great. Uh, Bernadeschi was was definitely an attacking, and I don't I don't know who is the third player, Ed. I forgot, and uh, I'm sure our good friend Richard Greenberg will tell us because I was going to actually look look it up, but I got a, a message from my daughter to open up the door, and I I told her wait because I'm still doing the show, so <laughs> that's why I was kind of distracted over here. All right, do you it's need like, to go? I forgot in- the key. Do you need Give to go answer the door? You can go answer the Give door. Give me right? a second. All right, yeah. go. Well, <laughs> I can hold down the fort for a minute while you go into the door. Give me but, a second now. But the game, uh, you know, like I said, the highlights that I saw, um, Insigne was insane. Insigne was everywhere. He he he's going to be a, a real challenge. So the and 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 there was a great uh, assist by uh, by the. Um, the old man on the team, um, what's his name? Uh, the son, um, and and uh, uh, you know, great assist there. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on names, Ed. I'm blanking on names. I'm, I'm back. Sure. I'm back. I what know, are I you talking you. about? I hear you. I'm trying to remember uh, the old bald guy on on uh, on um, Toronto, our international team player. Oh, uh, Bradley, he did a hell of a chip. Did you see that? For, yes, for that's what I was talking about. He's going? That's what I was talking about. It was his chip was a great assist to to uh, yeah. I think Bernadeschi, um, mm-hmm. and and who who it, that still was not an easy goal, but but they made it look good. So they're they're trending in the right direction at the right time. They've had a horrible season, but they made the it seems like they made the right ch- changes, and and we benefited from those changes in the fact that we got yeah. P- Pozuelo. But they they. Um, they're, they're moving in the right direction at the right time. Cause at the, the way MLS is, is look, 80% of the season really doesn't matter. Right. As it, long it, as you're yeah. in stride at the end, it's all that matters. We could, yeah. And, and, and you know, as, if anything, uh, and it's, it's been proven before that any team could win the champion. I mean, once the playoffs happens, it happens. Sometimes the, so the, the supporters shield winner doesn't get to be the champion. So, yeah, that was one example from last year when uh, New York City FC, they weren't, you know, they were one of the, the teams in, in, well, not in the bottom, but they weren't, um, you know, at the top of, of the, the standings and they won the championship. So um, that's how it is. So we've got a chance, guys. There's a chance we can do it. Tank721 is saying Yedlin is not going to fare well. Hopefully Gregory Lowe and McVeigh help double team him. I'd even put Lassiter on the right flank to help out. Speaking of shutting down Insigne, I don't get the hate for Yedlin. I think Yedlin has been great lately. He had a great game. Uh, I I uh, think this, he, this game. not just this game, the last several games. I mean, he's, you know, within team is pushing up. And actually, uh, Neville kind of talked about this, uh, not so much Yedlin, but talked about, I think uh, it might have been uh, Tank's brother that that brought up the question uh about mm-hmm. the fact that they, they they changed their formation a little bit they're they're pushing up a lot more which then leaves them uh you know open for fast breaks and and uh, you know we've seen a couple situations where you know teams have kind of especially not this game but specifically the game before that where you know they're they're you know we're pushed up too far and then they kind of just you know easily get behind us and right. and gregory i'm sorry greg yedlin on several occasions is the only one fast enough to get back and make a difference. So I that's don't know. true. That's I, true. I, I, uh, I, um, I like Yedlin. I think Yedlin's playing well and, um, he's a difference maker. Richard Greenberg yeah, is he... saying Chris, Chris, Domenico Crescito. Crescito is a third Italian yeah. player. And there's, he's the best friend of Insigne, so they should play well that. together. Yeah, they all have, they yeah. should have a good connection. But good, uh, yeah, good so they're they're playing but, well uh, at the right time. I was going to tell you, uh, basically every team in uh, in the Eastern uh, Conference has a chance of getting in to the playoffs, except DC United. So this is you know we lose a game, uh, somebody could take in that place, and we can go way down. Um, you know, they're all really close uh, 
uh, tight on 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 points. So if uh, Inter Miami loses um, or doesn't tie, uh, we need we need to get, get points, man. Hopefully we need we need a, a, a win. Uh, but Toronto needs a win too. Um, yep. So so that's uh, that's why I'm worried. Um, the good thing uh, an advantage we have is that they're playing a lot of games. So hopefully by the time they get over here, they'll be nice and tired. And we'll That's get some of that Miami for, heat or South yeah, Florida and, heat. And look, the way we're playing right now, we could definitely beat them. And look, we beat we beat New York. New York, I think, also recently lost to Orlando, too. So it's not saying they might be trending in the wrong direction a little bit. But we right. saw them. They're dangerous still. They're still a great team. But um, uh, Toronto's trending in the right direction, but we could beat them. I think we could we could beat them. You know, this team is seems to be finally going in the right direction. But yes, but these these guys are going going to be going to be tough. And and but it's going to be a fun game. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch Insigne and just hopefully, um, you know, Neville, uh, not Neville, um, Yedlin goes against Bruno's uh, uh, thinking and shuts him down and does a great job. Our defense is needs to be alert. They have fallen asleep. Big time. So many times that second goal in the New York game was a cluster. It was just a mess. They need to nope. clear that ball, man. Just clear it. It wasn't only that play. Several times in that game, they could not clear the stinking ball. They're making bad passes, back passes to the goalkeeper, which we could have been, you know, victimized on that, just like uh, New York was, and, yeah. or, or just so so many just. just Boot the ball. Like, I mean, like, I played defense, and I wasn't very good at it. But the ref, um, the coach always told you, like, if you can't pass out. out, boot it out. You know, get that, right. get it the hell out. Just blast it. And, I mean, they were trying to be cheeky, I guess, and play out of the back. Yeah. And, and, well, and I did I did see uh, Lowe, he, he did a, a soft pass to the mm-hmm. corner because he was kind of trapped. So, I'm glad, you know, that was, that was pretty cool because I was like, all right. He couldn't clear it, you know. He, that was his best option right there. Well, that's fine if so, you can't. I mean, you're in situation right. that happens, but there were so many situations in that game where they could have cleared it, and they did. Right. And like, and that's right. one of the problems with that in that second goal against New York. So, and 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 this kind of tandem right here or trio of Italians, um, they're they are, will make us pay for that. So they they right. definitely have to to work on that defense. I mean, the offense is finally starting to click. A little bit. I mean, we're not all there, but a little bit. And uh, but that defense falls asleep. And it's weird because they could play really great for a good portion of the game, but then they just fall asleep a few times and and, and get victimized for it, penalized for it. So right. right. Well, I like how the, the the people in the chat room they're still talking about the the Spice Girls and stuff. I think that's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's the beauty of our show is uh, you know uh, <laughs> we get off on, we get off on side uh, conversations and and uh, and uh, you know have some fun with it. That's that's the beauty of the show, and I think we're we're the guilty ones of of starting that trend. Is, is you know we love a tangent and and embrace a tangent um, all the time. So, all right, so Ed, that's a couple true. minutes left in the show. What do you think, Toronto? Um, what's what do you think the uh, uh, prediction? Scores? Yeah, prediction. I think um, you know. Uh, unfortunately, um, we always seem to go to give up a goal, and mm-hmm. uh, that seems our trend. Early, and, we, and, and we're always fighting back, and they always make us suffer. Yeah, I'm gonna probably have a, a heart condition uh, pretty soon, but uh, I'm I'm thinking about a two to one. I think we I think we'll get that win. So let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, that that would be a good. I, I, I'm I'm down with that. Two to one sounds good. Could be three to two. I mean, hopefully we don't tie. I mean, that's but uh, um, we need points. We need three points. We need those three game. points big we time, man. So we need it. We so need some tight. space from some of those guys in the bottom. Yeah, for sure. It's so tight in this in this lineup, and then you know we have where is the schedule here? So we have Toronto. And then the week after that, uh, we're up in Red Bull, and then we're in Toronto a few days later. So, I'm sorry, Toronto, Columbus. I don't know why I said Toronto. So tough games there as well. Columbus, Columbus. Yeah. Then we got Orlando coming. Come, yep, yep. That's that's going to be a good game right there. And uh, yeah, I know. Uncle Ned said he was going to be in town. 
I'm going to do everything I can to uh, to hopefully be in town for that. But I don't know. And yeah, tell them you'll fly early in the morning or something. I know. That's what I'm really going to try to do. <laughs> tell them well, I let need me to go in the morning. Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, I just won't be there See when the people goes. get in the office, but I'll be there, you know, a few hours later. Whatever. Exactly. Because here's, <laughs> here's, here's the thing. It's like it's a team that we're building and I've hired all the people. And so I'm there basically to to kind of be the face. Coordinate. So it's like, yeah. I'm not even going to manage this team that I'm putting together. I'm building a team oh, wow. and then turning it over. But but um, you know I'm the I'm the I'm the, as of now I'm the face that they all know the hiring because I, I yeah. I'm the hiring manager of this thing. It's just they they're using me to um, you know Aldo Enrique is saying ginger spice all day. He likes Ooh. the dirty girls. Oh man, look at him. Ginger was the Aldo. naughty girl. She, she was, was a naughty. little naughty. God bless her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Richard Greenberg. Three two for TFC. Of course, oh, you got to you got to pull that. for your guys. You got to pull for your guys. Yeah. Well, uh, well, let's hope Richard's wrong. Yeah, yeah, it'll be good to see Richard. Which, which, by the way, uh, you know, a little segue right there. I was trying to see if uh, we can get Richard on one of the, uh, the one of our uh, nerd shows because he's got well, some good contacts. We'll have a chance to talk to him. We could talk his yeah. ear off next week as he uh, comes to support his, uh, uh, you know, Toronto. Um, I lost my track. Oh, uh, anything. The one thing I, th- I thought of is, is, is as, as uh, you know, so we met, we met several people at this game. We met, we met, um, a, a viewer from Boston. He used to live in, in Miami. Now he lives in Boston. So thanks yeah. for stopping by saying hi. That was super cool. I know you said you met a couple of people, uh, climbing yeah. the stairs and everything like that. So that's yeah, a lot they of were fun. Like, you know, saying hello. Thanks guys for, for supporting us. So uh, I think we've been doing this the longest, uh, uh, if anybody in Inter Miami, because well, we it was supported the Strikers and Miami FC before right. that, so so we we've been around. We're the OGs. Well, Peter's the OG. Yeah, and 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 it's it's also it's fun as far as with this iteration of the show. We're one of the few that actually does a show during the off season as well. Most most of the podcasts shut it down during the off season. We keep it going because we got nothing so. better to do. We'll just hang with you guys and talk about the trades and the doldrums of the off season and and stuff like that. But uh, and hopefully you know, they start constructing that that stadium so we can do some construction videos. They got to start that soon. They got to start that soon. I was talking to a neighbor. Um, you see, I was walking around, walking the dog in my pink T-shirt, and uh, you know, I was telling him about the stadium that they're going to build in Miami because he was saying, "Hey, well, it's convenient at least for you to go to the stadium here." And I go, "Yeah, for now, <laughs> it won't be <laughs> it won't be so convenient in a few years, but." I'll still go. Well, Peter, why don't you take the train? That's something we were talking about also. Might. Well, mm-hmm. I'll at least try it. Here's the thing. The train, it's it's cheaper, right? It's cheaper if I go with just me and my wife, right? Maybe. Right. Because if it's, if it, I think what? You took the train to, and it's what? It was like cheap. It was like five bucks or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was like, I think even less. Okay. So let's say, okay. Well, less. Let's, okay. Then let's go. We got high. a video. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do I, have a video. Yeah. Uh, of you and Ricky taking the train and me picking you up, right? Um, and let but let's go high. Let's say it's five bucks, and so that's five bucks each way, right? I think it was three. To tell you the truth, okay, whatever. Let's. I, yeah. I, it's so if 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 it's as much as five bucks, you know that's that's uh, twenty bucks for me and my wife round trip. That's cheaper than parking, right? Parking's going to be at least thirty bucks because that's what it is here. So true. So it's yeah, and comfortable. Uh, so yeah, just take a while. Just take a while. But anyways, you're welcome. Uh, one world, one goal. She says, thanks for the Diego Serena 17. Love Peter with the jersey. We'll get him to visit plus sign it for you. Love the Spice Girls chit chat too. I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I want a signature on it. And I know that's cool. And I don't know. I'm not a signature kind of guy. I, I like to wear <laughs> stuff. Um, yeah. I actually have an inter, I have a Miami FC shirt. That is signed by the entire team, but it's before Diego was on the team. And that was because they presented it to me. And it says, instead of the sponsor name on the front, it says Ultras. Uh-huh. It says Ultras, because oh, okay. that was our supporters club that I helped create, that, that you know, I helped create. And uh, so they were honoring us to say thank you. And I have that uh, somewhere. I mean, in a closet, but um, right. I never framed it. But I That's should've. cool. Yeah, yeah you should have, totally. But, um, 
Anyways, tank. guys, I think we're we're winding down. Oh, who we got? What tank yeah, no, say? just Tank saying, I hope you all make it to the Southern Legion tailgating. I couldn't go yesterday, but I'll be there Saturday. We were there. We were there, and I don't know if we'll be there for the next one or not because we do need to get inside the stadium early enough to do another food review, but, you know, maybe we do. Maybe we can stop by a little bit. So, yeah. All right, everybody. I think that about wraps it up. We went late tonight. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. Please like, share, and subscribe. And, Ed, what else should they do? Guys, don't forget to watch us tomorrow. Uh, we, we do the FMTV Nerd Show. We're going to talk about uh, just about anything. I know there's a new Predator movie out. If you guys want to, uh, uh, Peter said he already watched it. What's it called? Prey. Prey. Uh, if you guys are are, are into that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a nerd thing to do. And there's been a lot of those movies. Uh, I'm going to watch it tonight. So we'll definitely have to talk about that. And we're, we'll talk about just about anything nerdy that you guys could uh, come up with. Movies, comics, etc. cetera. Uh, I think we can cover it. So uh, don't miss us tomorrow, 9 p.m. live. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. Let's help make it grow. We're on so many different platforms, whether you want to watch us on Twitter, whether you want to watch us on YouTube, whether you want to watch us on Facebook, we're there. So wherever you want to find us, just tune in. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, Canesware. Please go to Canesware and buy all your Inner Miami gear. See you next week.